In Creole Parametric, you can use CCX in order to perform electrical analyses to find where you might have creepage or clearance between electrical networks in your CAD models. Let's continue on with our exploration. In a previous video, we set up for the analysis. In this video, we are going to run the analysis and see how to improve our models. So I've got the assembly open. Let's go to the analysis tab. And then on the right side of the ribbon, we have the clearance and creepage analysis. I'm going to use the menu button to load a previous analysis from the last session. And so now it takes me right to the analysis tab. You can see that the meta tab has a green check mark, same with the electrical nets. So all that information there is defined. Now on the analysis tab, well, here we have our configuration. If you want to, you can right click on new configuration and rename the configuration or create other additional configurations. I'll just leave the default. For the configuration type, we can enter in custom values, but you can also use an Excel spreadsheet to define a standard table. The next choice that we have here is the violation tolerance. And the violation tolerance is an additional distance that you will add onto the calculated distance in order to determine whether you have a minor violation or no violation. So when you run the analysis, you're gonna have three different results. You're either going to have a major violation, minor violation, or no violation. The major violation is when the results are going to have a distance that is less than the target net distance that you specify down here. It's a minor violation if the calculated distance is less than the distance that you specify down here, plus the violation tolerance. And you have no violation when the distance for clearance or creepage is calculated to be greater than the target distance that you specify, plus the violation tolerance. We're gonna start off by entering in a value of two. So again, this is like an additional fudge factor that you are going to add on to ensure that you have a certain amount of safety. Then we can select our source for the electrical current that's going to be running through here. And in this particular case, we're going to be using net one, which we defined previously on the electrical nets tab to have a potential of 220 volts. And so when we specify net one as the source, it lists the other two nets that we are currently analyzing. So for example, if I go back to the electric nets tab, we can see that we said that nets four and five in the spring are potential free, but net three is grounded and net two also has potential. Let's go to the analysis tab again, and then we can specify our clearance distances and our creepage distances. And just a reminder, the the clearance distance is the minimum distance through the air between the two different nets. And we're going to use a value of seven millimeters for both to begin with. And then for the creepage distance, that's the distance along surfaces between the different nets that you want to avoid. We're going to use a value of 10 and a value of 10. Another value that you can specify is the groove width. So you might have gaps or grooves on the surfaces of your geometry and the groove width is the maximum width of the gap where you can get a short circuit across the air because air has less resistance than insulation. And for this one, let's use a value of 0.5 and a value of 0.5 for the other net. And so, again, when we have these different values, if you have results that are less than this distance, this is going to be a major violation. If the results for clearance and creepage are less than these distances plus the violation tolerance, that's going to be a minor violation and we're calculating the clearance and the creepage. You can choose either to compute the current source or compute all. 
And the reason that you might want to use compute current source, you might have a really complicated assembly and you just changed some of the numbers for one of the nets and you just want to compute the limited values that you modified for the current source, you could use that instead. But we haven't run anything at all so far, so I will use compute all and it finished running and so we can see for our source of net one well we have major violations let me try to adjust this in here a little bit here we have a column for the clearance and here we have a column for the creepage and the red x's indicate that we have major violations if i select net two from here well it highlights in the graphics area and for clearance it shows all paths and for creepage here we have our one path that it listed in here and so this is a violation of the different results so for example for creepage we said hey it has to be at least 10 millimeters well here it's a value of seven and for clearance you can see that we have values between seven and 8.95 and again we said that the clearance value was supposed to be seven so that's why we have these major violations let's go to net three and we can see okay here are the different violations and here it's between 5.54 and 7.92 so we have a major violation on the clearance and for the creepage here we have that 9.82 and we said it needed to be less than or excuse me greater than 10 plus that tolerance value of two and so we've got all our different results in here. And if you select one of them, you can get the path info and you can see indicated on the screen where it's got some of the graphics indicating where that path would be. And so you could zoom to the start point or zoom to the end point and you can show involved only. You can check that and you can see only that stuff. And here we are highlighting the source and the target. So you can see where you are getting those different violations. So let's go back and again, right now we have major violations all over the place. If we go to the analysis tab and we change this tolerance from this value of two, this sort of fudge factor that we added in, let's change it back down to a value of zero and then click compute all. In this particular situation, let's see, we still have some violations in here and let's, okay, just have a violation of seven and seven. And here we have fewer values in there for the violation given our specified numbers. And so there we have the results again, still major violations, but we want to improve the situation. So you could change the values that you're using for the clearance distances if that's something that you can live with or you can make changes to the geometry in your model let's click close out of here and we're going to start off by bringing in some other additional geometry in order to get some additional distance or separation between our different nets to start off with i'm going to open up the part called housing Right now it's in insert mode. I'm gonna grab the insert here bar down to the bottom. And so this puts in an additional barrier in the model that will block the net one from where net three is going to be located. Let's close to go back to the main window. And so you can see how that's going to provide some additional separation. Also, we have a part in here that is suppressed. I will left click on it and then choose to resume the component from the mini toolbar. And now we have that to provide some additional separation between net one and net two. So let's go back to our clearance and creepage analysis. And we've got the different values in here. As I showed in the first video, I'm going to check the box to show parts with undefined CTI value only. Here we have the guard part. This is the one that we resumed in the model. And right now it doesn't have that comparative tracking index specified. It's given a value of negative one. And so in order to make this be an insulator, we want it to have a value 
more than zero, and I'm going to use a value of 300, which is the value that we used for a bunch of the other different insulators in the model. Now, it is no longer visible along with all the other components in the model. Let's uncheck the box so that we can show all the different parts. In addition, we are going to cement a couple of the components together so they will act like a single body in terms of the creepage. By cementing this housing with the guard, we'll be able to increase the distance that the current would have to travel along the surfaces in order to violate our distance. So let's click on insert new cementation pair and I'm going to pick the housing. Let's hold down the control key and grab the guard and then middle mouse button. And so we can see that pair listed in here. Let's apply the metadata. And again, that will recreate the mesh that will be used for the analysis. Now we're on the electrical nets tab and we have the same results as before for what's potential free, what does have potential in the voltage and what is grounded. Let's apply the electric nets. Now we're back to the analysis tab and let's change this value to two like before. Let's change our source to net one like before. Here we have the same values for the clearance distance, the creepage distance, and the groove width. So now we will compute all. And so we have for the creepage between net one and net three, everything is good there. There's no violation, but we have minor violations between net two and net one for both clearance and creepage and between net three and net one for our clearance. Let's go back to the analysis tab and let's say that we didn't have any violation tolerance that we wanted to add on. So we'll change that to zero and then click compute all. And now we can see that we have no violations for clearance or creepage between our source of net one and our target nets of net two or net three. So everything is good in here. So this is the way that you can use CCX to figure out where you need to make changes to your component geometry in order to have a situation where you're able to avoid clearance and creepage so that you don't have the different electrical networks affecting one another. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.